Let's create a mesmerizing mermaid with fiery red hair set against a peaceful water lily pond. As glowing goldfish dance around her, the turquoise waters come alive, painting a scene of dreamy enchantment. To bring this ethereal image to life, I will be using my favorite mediums, watercolors, color pencils and gouache. From the initial sketch to the final brush stroke, I will walk you through each step, sharing techniques and choices that influenced this artwork. So let's delve into the process of bringing this enchanting mermaid to life. Before beginning the painting process, I always examine the reference closely to figure out where to start. For this mermaid painting, I decided to use masking fluid to mask the stars first, ensuring they remain untouched and pristine. After masking the stars, I experimented with my new metallic paints that I had just picked up at the dollar store. I wanted to make the moon appear bright and shiny. These metallic paints came in a variety of colors and I was curious to see how they would look on my painting. By the way, you may notice the intricate details in my initial sketch. That's because I printed my digital sketch directly onto my watercolor paper. This technique ensures that my reference is transferred seamlessly, it saves me time and it leaves no room for any errors. As I moved on to painting the mermaid's face, I took a moment to observe the unique contours and features that make her so captivating. I wanted to create a cute, sun-kissed skin tone that would accentuate her natural beauty. So I carefully selected a range of warm hues that would achieve this effect. I was careful not to create any harsh edges or color blooms that would detract from the overall effect. To create a harmonious blend of colors, I had to pay close attention to the consistency of the paint on my brush. I made sure to use the same ratio of water and pigment with each stroke. This required me to constantly adjust the amount of water on my brush, sometimes dabbing it off on a paper towel before applying the next layer of color. In addition, I had to work fairly quickly, since watercolor paint dries much faster than other types of paint. This meant that I had to be decisive with my brush strokes to create a smooth, seamless effect. Diving into the color palette, we've got a mix of purples, oranges, vibrant pinks and turquoises. Now, with such bright shades, it's crucial that they are spread out across the painting. This balance ensures that no areas feels too overwhelming or out of place. And here's a little secret. My absolute favorite color for making colors more vibrant is Oprah Rose. I often sprinkle it in to enhance the reds, pinks and even the purples. It's like a magic touch that brings everything together. For the first layer of the mermaid's tail, I've used a brilliant turquoise and added some metallic turquoise shades to give it some extra shimmer. I went for vibrant purples for the dress and besides of opera rose, I used another one of my all-time favorite color, which is cobalt turquoise, to bring the artwork to life. These shades really make the painting pop. Now let's take a closer look at the face. You might be wondering why I'm working on different areas of the painting all the time. The reason is that I want to make sure that each layer of the paint dries properly. This is essential to prevent the colors from blending together and becoming muddy. For the skin, I've chosen a combination of bright yellows and oranges to create a warm and vibrant tone. This will complement the painting's overall color palette and help to give the figure a healthy and lively appearance. As for the hair, I went with a striking red-orange color that really pops against the background. To achieve this effect, I'm using a combination of different shades of vibrant reds and made sure to keep my palette and brushes clean to avoid any muddiness. Have you noticed the olive green on the arms? It's a contrasting skin color and just see how it beautifully complements the orange. Working on the face is quite challenging due to its tiny size. Even though I'm working on hot pressed matte paper, in such a small size, the paper grain is very visible, so I had to be extra careful when using color pencils. One wrong move and I would have to start all over again. Creating an accurate reference for it wasn't easy either. Initially I used Get Image AI, which is a very useful AI website, but then I used FaceApp to refine it. Because with Get Image AI you often get the same faces over and over again. Using FaceApp is a neat trick I can recommend. While most people use FaceApp to enhance their selfies, I find it to be an excellent tool for perfecting art references. By the way, did you know that my Patreon supporters have access to the complete painting process of this artwork 
By joining me on Patreon, you will have access to a comprehensive tutorial library consisting of over 200 individual video lessons that cover various techniques such as watercolor, colored pencils, acrylics, oils and mixed media. Additionally, you will find a detailed guide on selecting the appropriate paints, pencils, brushes and papers as well as expert advice on layering, brush techniques, paper management, blending and correcting with gouache. And if you're interested in owning a beautiful print of the Mermaid area, you can visit my online store by clicking on the link in the video description. Now, going back to the painting process, I began a fresh layer on the moon using these new metallic paints. They looked really nice, were very affordable and super metallic and shiny. You'd think they're perfect, right? Well, they had their quirks, because layering watercolors on top became tricky. Instead of blending smoothly, the colors would blend out, leaving behind frayed edges. Not quite the look I was going for. But they were fantastic for little highlights. The moon, for example, now has this lovely metallic shine. I wanted the dress to be eye-catching, so I decided to use a combination of vibrant purples. This color scheme allowed me, again, to incorporate my all-time favorite shades, Opera Rose and Cobalt Turquoise. When applied to the dress, they brought the tail and upper part of the mermaid to life in a beautiful way. I took great care in painting the dress's folds and made sure that they were intricate and precise. The blending of the vibrant purples was seamless, creating a beautiful and captivating effect. I layered the colors in a way that allowed them to work together to create a sense of three-dimensionality in the dress. The use of highlights and shadows also added to the realism. I was awestruck by the mesmerizing vibrancy of the purple hues. The final outcome exceeded my expectations and managed to capture the essence of the mermaid's beauty and grace like I hoped it would. For the antique temple, precision was essential. I used a ruler to get those straight lines just right and opted for Polychromos color pencils for the detailing. The outcome was a striking contrast against the dreamy pink and blue backdrop, giving the scene a richer and more layered look. Now, let's talk about my fascination with antique temples. They're timeless, majestic and offer such a splendid backdrop to my art. I often merge them with serene water elements, creating a harmonious blend of history and nature. They all transport us to bygone eras. Whether it's the Roman or Greek temples, each has its own charm. As I worked on the goldfish, I picked up the opera pink to make their oranges hue stand out. To create contrast, I used a light blue polychromos pencil and a hatching technique to give the fish a unique texture. As I painted, my mind wandered to the captivating legends of mermaids. From ancient Greece, we have stories of sirens, whose hauntingly beautiful songs lured sailors to their doom. They were not the friendly mermaids of modern tales, but rather enchantresses of the deep, whose beauty was matched only by their danger. Slavic legends have also many fascinating mermaid-like creatures, and among them are the Rusalkas. Unlike ordinary water nymphs, Rusalkas are believed to be the souls of young women who died tragically and prematurely. They are often found in lakes and rivers, where they dance under the moonlight and sing songs about their past. Some legends describe them as helpful beings, who assist farmers in growing crops and guide lost travelers. However, there are also stories of their dark side. During Rusalka week in early June, it's said that swimming in lakes and rivers is dangerous, because Rusalkas may drag unsuspecting swimmers underwater. But let's sail further north, to the icy waters where the Vikings roamed. While not exactly mermaids, the Norse had their own tales of sea-dwelling beings. Have you ever heard of the Selkies? These elusive beings can transform from seals into humans by simply shedding their skin. In human form, they are often depicted as irresistibly attractive, and there are stories about their romantic entanglements with humans. Some stories even speak of humans stealing Selkie's skin, forcing them into marriage. But the sea always calls them back. And if they find their skin, they return to their watery realm, often leaving behind heartbroken families. The European tales of mermaids are well known, but there's another version of these creatures from the Far East, the Ningyo. Unlike the elegant mermaids of our imagination, Ningyos are peculiar looking, with monkey-like mouth and tiny fish-like teeth. However, their scales glitter like gold and their voices are calm and melodious, like a skylark song or a gentle flute. People believe that consuming their flesh offers immortality, which is a tantalizing promise. 
But catching a Nino is said to bring out storms and misfortune. So how do you go about getting their flesh, right? Fishermen have stories of accidentally catching these creatures and then hurriedly releasing them back into the sea. If an Ingyo were to wash ashore, it is seen as an ominous sign, foretelling war and great calamity. Now, peeling off the masking fluid to reveal the golden stars is always a moment I cherish. There is something so satisfying about how the rubber leaves behind pristine white areas, similar to when you remove the tape from the edges of a watercolor painting. It's all about seeing how the untouched white contrasts with the surrounding colors. This technique, while simple, totally transformed my painting process because, shockingly, I only started using masking fluid after one of my students suggested it about a year ago. I'm incredibly grateful for that tip. Before that, I would painstakingly paint around intricate details, which was quite the task. This recommendation has since changed my approach, making certain aspects of my painting process smoother and more efficient. Using masking fluid forms a protective layer for specific parts of your artwork. It ensures that certain areas remain untouched, allowing for sharp, clean edges. And when it comes to stars, this precision is crucial to making them stand out amidst the backdrop. Now, a note about the paper I'm using. It's the Hahnemühle The Collection 900 gram fine art hot press paper. Its thickness ensures it doesn't warp easily, which makes it ideal for watercolor techniques. However, its fine texture means I have to be cautious when I remove the masking fluid. I've learned that I need to be very careful to avoid any unwanted damage, but sometimes it happens anyway. Luckily, minor imperfections can be integrated into the artwork and they will blend right in. Now, let's dive into finalizing the mermaid tail. How I adore this part! However, it's not just a walk in the park, it requires a gentle hand and a whole lot of patience. I take my time, painting each fin line and scale with precision. The key is to keep the colors crisp and clear and avoid any muddiness. Just look at those blue scales, aren't they lovely? And when I remove the rubber from the scales, it's like magic. The pure white of the paper shines through, mimicking the shimmer of light reflections. To add a bit of warmth and contrast, I use color pencils, hatching in a rich brown tone. It creates this beautiful dance between the warm brown and the cool turquoise of the tail. As I moved forward, I painted the water in a rich turquoise tone and decided to experiment a bit with the greenish metallic paints. I usually stick to golden metallics, so playing with different colors was a tad overwhelming. But here's a tip, when using metallics, sometimes less is more. A touch here and there can make all the difference. The hatching technique I used here is neat, but daring. Each stroke with my color pencil is permanent, leaving no room for second guesses. It's a dance of precision and boldness, creating these lovely diagonal hatchings. Every line, every mark has to be deliberate. When I do complicated things like that, I tell myself to trust my instincts and go with the flow. Next, I reach for my gouache paints to add those semi-transparent and opaque waves. The light blue tone was just perfect, adding a serene touch to the water. Gouache has this unique ability to blend seamlessly, yet stand out when needed. It's like painting with liquid silk, allowing for both subtlety and boldness. The waves with their gentle curves and soft hues brought a calming rhythm to the piece. Turning my attention to the mermaid's hair, I added red and orange gouache accents. Those curls, so full of life and movement, seemed to dance on the canvas. The fiery red hue, combined with the gentle waves of the hair, created a mesmerizing contrast. It's always fascinating how the right shades can breathe life into the painting, making it leap right off the paper. To tie everything together, I added soft pink and beige gouache accents. And for some final touches, I made a few corrections to the hair, ensuring it stands out beautifully against the background. Last but not least, those delightful water bubbles. Painting these always brings a smile to my face. And with that, we've reached the end of our artistic journey together. Remember, every brushstroke is a step towards creating something magical. I hope I see you in the next video. Bye bye!